How are you? How are you doing? If my hair looks a little bit crazy, just don't judge. I just came out of the rain and the cold and the winds and I was not prepared for that type of weather today. So that's the ordeal. Um, but anyways, got back from Trader Joe's and I had to go to Trader Joe's because I had to get ingredients to make my charcuterie board because today is Tuesday. Thanksgiving is on Thursday, and my contribution to Thanksgiving extravaganza is normally the charcuterie board. That's kind of like my vibe. I do like the appetizer type thing because sometimes my family runs a little bit late with like the main dinner. So, you know, as people trickle in, they just, they need a good little snack. And that's my little, that's my vibe. And I love my charcuterie board like down. I love it. I don't know if it's an earth sign thing, I, I know everybody likes charcuterie wards, but I feel like maybe earth sign people or just Virgos get really, really into it. Like it's like an Olympic sport to me. Like I spent so much money on my charcuterie board that probably shouldn't be spent. I mean, it wasn't too crazy. I was a little bit worried when he was racking up my Trader Joe's like checkout and I was like, Ugh. it didn't go over a hundred, which is nice. It was definitely more expensive than it should have been, but I commit. Okay, I commit to this. I commit to the presentation, to the taste, to the experience. Like when you enter the charcuterie board that I create, it is like a Met Gala ball. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I just, I like my charcuterie boards. Um, so yeah, I did get those ingredients. Um, I won't be able to get them tomorrow. That's why I have to go today after class just because I said to do tomorrow, which we'll talk about that because I'm excited about that. But I wanted to show you guys what I've got because, I mean, I know Thanksgiving will already be passed by the time you're seeing this, but in case you have another event coming up where you want to make a, no, let me put it on um, In case you have another event coming up where you want to make a charcuterie board, I just figured it might be helpful to like, you know, to get those vibes. But, okay, first thing and only thing that I have acquired that's not Trader Joe's is the Good and Gather, like, cheese tray from Target. Um, you just need a good run of your mill basic cheese tray with your cheddar. You know, your basic rectangular cheeses. Is this, why is the lighting so bad? I don't even know how much this is. This is Pepper Jack, Monterey Jack, Jalapeno Pepper, and Colby Jack. I don't know if anybody is gonna be liking that jalapeno pepper cheese, cause that sounds kind of disgusting. Um, okay, and then into the Trader Joe's stuff. So start, we got, you need a good nut mix, a good nut trail mix. This is the Omega Trek mix with dried cranberry and roasted nut blend. Some of the mixes have like chocolate chips in them. My family's not, they don't, they don't vibe with that. My, I think if I handed my grandmother a bowl of trail mix nuts, and there was a chocolate chip in there. She'd be confused. I actually don't even know if she could eat nuts. So I don't know what I'm talking about, but I just know this feels more professional, okay? It's just simple dried cranberry and some roasted nuts. So we got that. Okay, this is a necessity to the platter. The Trader Joe's sour cream spinach dip is so good it's one of the best dips i should have got two i should have got two 
but I was trying not to overdo it because I'm like, again, this is just the appetizer. But at the same time, everybody really loves this dip. So I don't know. Maybe I'll ask my mom. But I'm like, everybody really loves this dip. I feel like I doubled up on things I didn't need to. And then I should have doubled up on this dip. But yeah, this 10 out of 10, guys. It's so good. So that. And then, okay, let's stick with, so the meats. I only recently started doing meats in the charcuterie board. I would normally just keep it to cheese and crackers. But the other year I was like, you know what, let me spice it up. Let me get some salami. The salami is really good. It's a nice touch. Even though we already got a lot of red meats going on on the Thanksgiving plate with some with, with your ham, you know, I think just salami is a nice little appetizer. It's just it's good. And this is the uncured applewood smoked one. I they have like 30 different versions and I cannot tell the difference. Your grapes. Trader Joe's thankfully has the half and half green, half red grapes. It just it adds coloring, it adds prettiness. Um they taste good that nice sweet and salt with your cheese. Why am I talking about this like it's rocket science? I don't know, but I really enjoy my charcuterie board. Speed it up. I got these crackers. These aren't my main selling point cracker, but they just sound really good. Um, the Trader Joe's Pita Bite crackers. They're like mini pita crisps. I don't know, this just sounds real good like i could put it maybe in a bowl because i feel like they're gonna be tiny and i could like put it in a bowl and then you take and then you could dip it in your dip oh i wanted olives but i don't know i was confused by that because i feel like olives added to a charcuterie board doesn't mix with grapes so i think i already committed to the grapes and i had to go with the grapes if i wanted to do olives then that would have been it that would have had to be its own thing you know okay last thing oh two more things so we have our other cheeses our final cheeses this is a new cheese i haven't tried this it's a brie double creme with truffles and it's just like you know a little circular and i'm thinking so this one i also get and this is another i believe this is brie i believe it's brie but this is one you can bake in the oven so that it's like melty, like fondue, and then you could dip it. And what I do is I take raspberry jam or preserves. I put it on top of this, melt it, and then you could like do that little, you know, fondue type dip with your cracker, with your pita cracker, whatever. You could do that. But I think also having this little circular cold brie on the side that you can like actually just cut into, eat regularly if you want to, like having that option is nice. That's everything I got for my charcuterie board. And then I needed tea because I ran out of tea. So I just got green and chai and that's the vibe. But yeah, so the one thing that I'm missing, which is like, <laughs> it's a really important thing, is Target has these good and gather fig, crackers so it's like a sweet and salty cracker and it's like it's it's like the best cracker it's so good and it's perfect for a charcuterie board because it looks pretty and it tastes great with all of these different dips and cheeses they didn't have it they didn't have it at the target i went to so i'm gonna have to go on a little hunt find some different targets maybe tomorrow and see if i can find it really cross my fingers because it's like it's really like it drives it home. It drives it home. The little fig cracker. And then sometimes they have cranberry pumpkin crackers. So good. And it just puts it all together. So those are all my ingredients. And then my board, like, um, I still have, like, a, a board that I bought last year. Like, I really went all out. I splurged last year buying the board and the materials and all of that. So I still have that. It's at my mom's house. So, yeah. I normally... Of course, like I'll set it up when I get to my grandma's house, all that stuff. Maybe, I get, maybe I'll take y'all with me to Thanksgiving this year. Maybe, I don't know, if you want to join. Okay, I'm changed into my pajamas. I didn't realize it's only five o'clock. I literally hate 
this daylight savings or daylight standard, whatever. I, I don't like this. I don't like this because why did I think it was 8 p.m.? Like, why did I think it was just like 8 p.m.? It was time to eat dinner and I and vibe. Like, I, I don't. And I'm like, my body is hungry, but I'm like, babes, you never eat dinner at five o'clock. Like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, I might just have to do it and then like go to bed early or something. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, that's beside the point. I got to figure that out. But what I do know that I want to do with the rest of my day, A, I have a little homework assignment that I need to finish. And I keep procrastinating it and I really need to do it because I feel like my teacher is going to like hop in the portal and grade it anytime now. Oh shoot, I have a discussion board too. I have a discussion board do also that I completely forgot about. So I have to do those. So maybe I should start with those. And then I need to do a Hunger Games rewatch because tomorrow I'm going to see a ballad of songbirds and snakes. I finally know the full title of the freaking movie. Um, but yeah, tomorrow I'm going to see it. I'm so astronomically excited. So astronomically excited and you know why? I've never in my life seen a Hunger Games movie in theaters. Like when Hunger Games first came out and was really popular, that was like what, 2016? No, earlier than 2016 when I'm talking about like the last one was like 2016, right? I don't know. But it was like early, like 2013, right? Like that was like the dystopian era. And I was not going to the theater at that point. Like I was not going to the theater. And I especially was not watching Hunger Games. For some reason, Hunger Games felt too grown for me. But I was watching Vampire Diaries. So I don't know. I don't know what was clicking there, Steven. But yeah, Hunger Games always just felt very off limits to me. I gave myself these like censorship ratings for shows that made no sense because I was watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Vampire Diaries at like 11. Was I? I don't know. 12? And then, but I was like, oh no, Hunger Games can't do that. Too crazy. Too much. So yeah, never experienced seeing a Hunger Games film in the actual theaters. And I feel like I don't know, it's just really exciting. I'm going to my favorite theater, Lincoln Lincoln Square, um, biggest IMAX screen. I got an IMAX, I'm going in the IMAX theater and I'm going alone. So I was able to pick a seat smack dab in the middle, which is literally, it's my favorite thing. Like if y'all don't, like I am just overjoyed. I'm overjoyed. I'm gonna get my churros because the theater has these churros that are stuffed with Nutella. Like I could cook, I literally could cry. I literally could cry. I've been looking forward to this for so long. For so long. So yeah, that's the plan for tomorrow. And to lead up to that, I wanted to do a rewatch. I don't know if I should do a rewatch or if I should just do the last two films. Because I can kind of. The only film I've never ever seen is Mocking Jay Part 2 in the last half of Marking J part one. I always kind of like skid off in those last ones. Catching Fire is my favorite, love Catching Fire. Um, I don't know the last time that I've seen the first one. Um, so that might be fun to watch the first one and, and then do that. I don't know if I wanna have to go through Rue's death. So I don't know about that. I don't know, maybe I'll just watch Marking J part two to see how it closes off. Cause how many, I think, are they each like an hour and a half? Okay. Two hours and 26 minutes is the first one. Okay, so maybe no, <laughs> maybe no. Okay, two hours and 26 minutes. And then where is the freaking, can you show me the rest of them please? Can you show me the rest of them, please? Where's the second one? I don't need to watch Catching Fire. I know the plot. I've seen Catching Fire like three times. How long is Catching Fire? Catching Fire. Oh, Catching Fire came out in 2013. Two hours and 26 minutes as well. What is with them in these two hours and 26 minutes? Is this like a specific time frame they have to fit? How long is Mockingjay Part 1? 
<laughs> I think we're just gonna have to watch the last two Mocking Jays. Two hours and three minutes. And then part two is probably two hours. So yeah, I'm only gonna be able to watch Mocking Jay part one and two. I can maybe skim the first one. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, part two is the, the biggest one because I just need to know how it ends. I kind of seen the spoilers already and you know, because it's lived in the world for so long. So I've kind of seen how it ends. But I just need to like really, really know the ending. That way I can compare it to the prequel I'm about to see with Miss Lucy Gray. I just know I should carry a box of tissues. I just know I'm going to cry because anytime I hear Olivia Olivia Rodrigo's new song, what is it called? Catch Me Now? I don't, I don't know the titles of things, y'all. But the one's like, you can't, you can't catch me now. Higher than the dreams that you saw. Higher than the, higher than the, higher than the hopes you can't break higher than the higher than the dreams you higher than the dreams you can bring down something like that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter no it does matter because y'all are gonna y'all are screaming it y'all are screaming it through the screen you're like Maya these are the freaking lyrics so I, I just I just want to confirm I just want to confirm Ah, uh, I'm close. I'm higher than the hopes that you brought down. Anyways, anytime I hear that song, I instantly bawl. I don't know why. It's something about the indie folk. I love indie folk music. I love indie folk music. But especially when Olivia sings it, I think Olivia is really like missing her calling. Like I think she should, you know, take a break from the pop and the rock. And she should really lean into this like indie hosier type beat because I would eat up an album of that. But yeah, I, I know I'm going to bawl my eyes out because that song already makes me cry and just, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm excited. I'm excited. And that's what's happening tomorrow. I'm going to take myself on like a little like date. Like I'm really just going to treat myself for the day. I'm going to go to my favorite ramen place. And I love it because you just sit alone and it's like a very like sit alone type of place. So I'm gonna go do that, eat my ramen for breakfast, go watch my movie while I eat my churros. Like I, you don't know how, like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's the plan. So I have to figure out what movie I'm going to watch tonight. I don't think I need to watch the first Hunger Games. I, it's hard for me to sit through that one, you know? So, sometimes it's hard for it. I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't hit me the same way that like Catching Fire hits me. Literally so obsessed that like in my production class, like our teacher allows us to like bring in a clip that we really like from a movie and show it to the class and then like try to like break it down. And I'm like kind of getting secondhand embarrassment for myself because why did I show them a clip, that one clip of Catching Fire when Katniss re-enters the cornucopia for the for the second time, and she's like going up and then the camera spins and then she dives into the water and then she's like, I showed them that, and nobody really had a nobody was really interested so I was like okay, I'm just kind of like I thought y'all went okay so. That gave me a little secondhand embarrassment, but it's fine. It's fine. <sighs> I can't believe it's five o'clock. Should I just eat the food? I have leftover like my um my Hello Fresh last night was like this soup type thing, which is good because it's like freezing. It's cold. But I'm like, bruh, five o'clock dinner, and I don't have enough ice cream to eat as like a second meal. This is like my soup. Should I just eat it? I think I'm just gonna eat it. Screw the rules. Like honestly, screw the rules. So yeah, I'll check back in with you guys. I don't know if I have much else to say tonight. I'm just gonna be watching my movie. Okay. Gotta finish up that homework. And then, yeah. 
Okay, I truly never do what I say I'm gonna do, but I warms up my little biscuit and my soup. I have to take it out of the microwave. Um, but I needed like something, I always need like a comfort thing while I eat and normally it's good one girls. And I'm going through a little dilemma and I just, I was going to wait to discuss it with y'all, but I think it's just pressing on my mind that I need to discuss it now. Okay. And I'll try to do it quick. I'll try to do it quick for those of you that don't know about Gamma Girls or care, but it's like a life altering. Why does my hair do that? It's like, I'm, I'm going through kind of like a life altering crisis um, when it comes to this. So basically, I'm finishing off season three. Okay, I'm about to end off season three. Rory's about to graduate Chilton. She's about to go to Yale. And season three is normally my favorite season of all time because we get Jess and Rory. And I, you guys know I make it half of my personality. Well, not half. Half as much because being a Virgo is already like 97% of my personality so there's only 3% left. So I don't know about that. It's a lot of my personality, like maybe like 0.5%. And I'm always adamant that I'm team Jess. And I always hate on people that I'm like, bro, like how could you not be team Jess? And re-watching this season in my grown age, and I'm not even that grown, I'm just 21, but re-watching the season and like the last time I've watched Gilmore Girls, I was probably 18. Or 19. 18 or 19. And I'm realizing now that I'm probably not Team Jess. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't even believe I'm saying it out loud. Okay, here is the thing. Jess Mariano is still one of, if not, my favorite character. He might not be my favorite. I think Luke is my favorite. And then... Lola, no, Luke is my favorite, and then Emily, no, and then Richard, I, I don't know. He's really one of my favorites, still. I love Jess, I love his, like, anti-hero, morally gray, you know, not even, like, bad boy, but just, like, misunderstood, and I'm realizing now why I was Team Jess before was because I was really, I really loved characters like that and people like that like they just like fascinated me the whole like like misunderstood like outcast type vibe and I still love characters like that like I feel like Jess has so much nuance because you know I think he just has so much going on as a character and I like that I like that about him I like that he like he has a certain amount of people that he cares about, but the rest of the world, he's kind of just like, no, you know? But I think in regards to a relationship, to him as a boyfriend, at least in season three, when they were actually like, when it was like the only time that they were together, at least in season three, I can no longer be Team Jess in the sense of Team Jess and Rory, because he was a terrible boyfriend to her. I don't know. I really must have warped it in my brain. But he was really bad to her. And I guess I didn't think that way when I was like a little bit younger. Because my standards were slightly lower. Like I think, I think now I'm at a place where I like know I really, I know I could be attracted to somebody that might, you know, be one of these morally gray Jess type characters. But I can never actually see myself settling down because that unreliability and kind of the the will they, won't they, are they gonna show up, are they not gonna show upness? Oh, I I can't do it. I can't handle it. I need structure, I need consistency, I need A, B, C, D. You can't go from A to D and then go to Q and then come back to A. It doesn't work. So I'm realizing that I'm in a relationship sense, I can't be team Jess and Rory because he kind of was that for her. Like he he wouldn't call when he said he would call. That would literally make me want to jump out of a window. Like, you know, he wouldn't plan dates. He, you know, he he kind of, he's like an avoidant. He's an avoidant attachment style is like the vibe that I get. And I can't do avoid. I can't do avoidance. 
So yeah, it's just that I had that revelation and it really hurt me because I, I've been slandering people for years about not being Team Jazz. Realistically, I mean, I'm about to get into Logan's vibe. I do think Logan might be my closest next option. Like, I don't even, I don't know. I kind of forget their relationship. So I'll have to see. I'm really going to be sad if it comes down to me having to decide that I'm Team Dean. But honestly, comparing Team, D comparing Dean as a boyfriend and Jess, 17 year old Jess as a boyfriend, Dean was great. Like, if I could get Jess's aura and personality and banter and wittiness into Dean's, like, intentionality and, like, building a car for me and, like, calling and coming, you know what I'm saying? Like, put him with that and mix them together. That would be perfect. But I just, I don't like Dean's personality. I don't like Dean as a character. Okay, but I liked their I liked that their relationship was healthy. I don't think Jess and Rory's relationship was super healthy, but I think they were great for each other, just not at that moment in time. So I feel like I could still be team Jess, but just team Jess in the future. And if you guys have ever seen the A Year in the Life thing, the the Netflix reboot where we kind of get that like open-ended, like still like will they, won't they with like Jess and Rory. In my eyes, I just have to picture that, you know, Jess went up to Rory and they said, you know, let's give this another try when they were grown adults and they both had healthy relationship uh, practices and they work out. Cause I do think they personality wise just match so well, but Jess was just going through it. You know, he was going through it and it wasn't his time. It wasn't his time. So that's my revelation. And it's kind of giving me a little bit of anxiety to watch the show. Because I'm like, I know what part comes up next. And I'm like, oh my god. And then it's just like, it's just sad because I normally really love this season. But I'm just realizing he needed some work. Okay. Okay. But I still love him. I still will not allow any just slander. I still will not allow that. Okay? So keep that to yourself. No, I'm kidding. You can say what you want. But like, yeah. I still love Jess as a character because I love anti-heroes. But I'm just realizing like from a realistic perspective, like Rory's relationships were probably healthier and were probably better for her. Let me go get my freaking soup out the microwave. My biscuit's freaking cold. Like... Oh no. a little bit loud in here but um i made it to ichiram i'm sitting down now in my little booth 
um i was able to stop at target and get the crackers because i looked up um like the fig crackers and they said they had it in stock in the one at 34th street and i had to pass 34th street to get uptown to 42nd so is this my ramen i'm like scared that my ramen's about to come um so yeah stopped at the target i got my crackers they had it i got like four of them which was unnecessary but i just get anxiety when like things sell out and then i feel like i need to like overcompensate but i'm like i don't think we're gonna eat four boxes of crackers but even so they're good crackers so it's i don't think it's gonna go to waste um and then i just hopped back on the train it took me five minutes to come to 42nd street and now i'm at ichiran which i have been here once before i took you guys here once before it was like another solo date thing i love coming here for like solo date energy vibes because you just like sit in your little like cubicle and you order your ramen at the at the front oh shit my ramen's here thank you slightly awkward but my ramen came but yeah as i was saying you just sit in your cubicle you order your food at the at the front door um and i just get like the very like basic like it's very simple like all they all they really sell is ramen like that's it like it's nothing crazy you just add your toppings add what type of flavoring you want and then you just sit down and and you eat it so i'm about to devour my little ramen and i also have the toppings like the egg the meat the scallions um and the seaweed so i'm gonna do that it's 2 11 now so i still have time my movie starts at four um and now that i've gotten everything out of the way like i was worried that i wouldn't have enough time because i was worried that i wasn't going to be able to find the crackers but i found the crackers so now i have two hours to spare and the movie theater is only like two train stops up so yeah I'm gonna enjoy. It smells really good. And I'm gonna shout down. McNally Jackson bookstore like two blocks up so I think it won't hurt to just like stop by there and then there's like a train right by there so I could always just hop on the train I I'm not gonna buy anything unless they have the physical copy of either yeah unless they have the physical copy of what's it called what am I reading better than the movies I don't know if that sounds like insane but there's something like i just need to have the physical copy even though i'm reading it on kindle i don't know if that makes sense so maybe maybe i won't do that but eventually i'm gonna need to get the physical copy like i need it on my shelf so why not just have it be now look at all the lights christmas time <laughs> Somehow I completely forgot where the Rockefeller Center tree is and I ended up right here. Like, oh, they haven't even lit it yet. Okay, look. Okay, there's the tree. She looks 
slightly underwhelming because I think they're still setting her up and like lighting her. I've never seen her when she's like not been lit before. But she looks so small when she's like not lit up. But yeah, you can see like the people in there. I guess they're like setting up the lights and everything because I think they brought her in like a few days ago. But yeah, I didn't even realize where I was walking to. But there she is, guys. There you go. There's your Christmas content. Merry Christmas or happy holidays. I don't know. I've seen like three Santa Clauses riding like the little carriage bikes. And I'm like, was it Halloween like two weeks ago? I think I'm just like really like frazzled and I don't really, I don't really, I don't, I don't know what's happening. I like could have sworn that it was just Halloween. We just finished Halloween and now it's Christmas. bookstore because I've been walking for more than two blocks. serious self-restraint issues because I just bought $63 worth of books I bought three of them I'm not gonna show them to you now I'll show them to you later I feel like they were justified because at the end of the day I was gonna have to get them anyways so like why not just get them now but I did spend $63 and then I spent $30 today on my ramen so like how much money is that I don't even no, like 90? Which way am I going? I have to find the train. One second. I'm so excited. I'm like kind of nervous, but like excited. And I don't want to have to pee. So I'm going to have to like, I don't even think I'm going to get a water. Because like I really don't want to have to pee. because I don't mind my hair by the way we're doing it okay we're, we're about to look more presentable okay I'm getting ready but just don't mind that for right now um kind of going through it because I was like looking back on my footage from yesterday and I realized that it was all filmed in slow motion I don't know how I filmed it in slow I don't even know how to change my camera into slow motion so I don't know how I did it which also means I don't know how to undo it. So I'm currently filming on a different camera. Luckily I have a different camera and I need to be able, I need to like look up how to change that. I'm sure it's something very simple, but I just don't, I don't have the mental capacity right now to do that. Cause like I was about to cry. Cause I was like, bro, the one time that I grow the balls to film in public and it wants to be in slow motion. But, you know, I'm sure Future Maria fixed it. Like, I don't know. I'm sure I already told you guys this because I had to edit this vlog. So, like, I had to. You, you've already seen it. You've already seen it. Okay? You already know. You knew before me. And I'm just sad. But it's fine. I'll make do. I really don't know how it freaking happened, though. So, that's, like, concerning because I don't want it to happen again. But, yeah, whatever. Everything happens for a reason. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. Um... What was I gonna say? So yeah, moving on from that, I'm trying to get back. I was in such a good mood this morning. I woke up, I was singing my little song. I was talking about some, you can't, you can't catch me now. Maybe I need to like play it in order to get me back in a holly jolly spirit. But anyways, it's Thanksgiving. I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving. But most importantly, we need to talk about that movie. We need to discuss that freaking movie i don't even know necessarily where to start i guess i'll start with my rating my rating well should i rate it like a, a book should i rate it like a book like out of five stars 
I don't know. I actually don't know if I should give a rating because I kind of want to see it again. Obviously, like, not, I'm not going to go to the theaters and see it again. But, like, I'm looking forward to when it comes on whatever streaming platform and then I can watch it again. Because I feel like it's, The Hunger Games is such a film that, A, you really got to watch with subtitles. It, it, that might just be me. But I feel like subtitles does help to really get the to understand what they be saying sometimes because I'm like we already got these confusing names talk about some Coriolanus talking about some Lucy Gray is the only one with a normal name we're talking about some Plymouth Sogenius Cretaceous Calamitous like I get it it's a dystopia it's 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 a it's like years and years into the future where evidently they they have lost their sanity when giving children names but I was just like, wait, who? What? Who? But anyways, that's beside the point. I think genuinely, for my first time watching it, I would give it a five star, okay? Now, taking in, you have to take in all of my context and all of my, not necessarily biases, but like, you know, my, my experiences. I've only ever read the first Hunger Games book and I read it in freshman year because it was like a it was my English class reading like that was our reading book for the year we read the freaking Hunger Games like I mean I wasn't complaining but I'm like okay that was okay um so yeah I read it once in freshman year don't remember Jack squat about the book and then from there never read any of the other books and I also did not read Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So I don't know from the perspective of people that have read the books, they might have different opinions, like there might be, you know, differences or stuff like that, but I don't know any of that. I'm going into it from the perspective of somebody that has never read the book, and I thought it was a phenomenal villain origin story. I love villain origin stories, not necessarily to justify or to diminish anything that the villains do throughout the rest of the films but just to like understand humanity and understand human beings a bit more like I feel like one thing that I love about like anti-heroes or like villain origin stories in like books and movies is that it shows us that like life isn't necessarily as black and white as we make it out to be and also that people are a product of their environment or people are products of their situations. And I just like seeing what makes someone become this way. Because it feels so unrealistic to me if like a book or a movie just has a villain being a villain for the sake of being a villain. Like they just wake up one day and want to kill everybody. And they wake up one day and want to ruin the whole world. Like that to me seems unrealistic because I think all people have motivations for doing the things that they do and oftentimes people think even though they're villains they think what they're doing is correct or they think what they're doing is right so it's like just throwing like a villain in there just for the sake of them being a villain and like they don't have any like true story to make me understand why they're doing what they're doing but again it's not to make it a justification it's just to make it feel more realistic feel more real especially for a dystopian situation like you know like dystopia is supposed to be kind of like a play on our reality and i think having this origin story for snow that's what that's not a spoiler like that's that's the premise of the of the film and the book Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is a prequel, because I didn't even explain, I don't, I don't know if you guys care, but it's a prequel to the, the three books, so it takes place like decades before Katniss, and it's kind of like Coriolanus, his origin as who he, who he becomes when we meet Katniss. So that's kind of what it is, and I thoroughly enjoyed that aspect and I also love seeing origin stories after I've already seen where this character is like I love meeting a character at their end and meeting a character at their worst point and then going back and seeing where they were in the beginning I think it just I think I love that and that's why this is like a complete sidebar but like 
if you don't know about the Throne of Glass, Sarah J. Mass's Throne of Glass book and how there's a lot of disputes with the reading order because there's a prequel no no novel that's like a compilation of a bunch of novellas that happens before the like initial first book of Throne of Glass. And a lot of people dispute whether you read the prequel first and then go into the first book or if you read the first book and then continue on and then read the prequel kind of like third I think I read it fourth I think I read it fourth and the reason that worked so well for me is because I knew this character from who she became like I, I met this character in her midpoint I met her at her lowest and like you know like at this at this like rocky area and it's like you don't know why but you get to like grow and develop into this like oh like this is who she is and then you jump back after you've already met her at this future moment to this prequel to understand like more and I just think I, I think that hits different like it makes learning the past of somebody hit different so anyways that's how I felt about this movie and it genuinely inspired I really want to read the Hunger Games now read do a full like reread the first book and then just jump into the whole thing because I think within the books I think within the within the movies I love it I love the world building I love all of that but there's moments where I really want like internal dialogue and I really want to know what's going on through these characters heads because I think it's such a it's such a like character driven uh like um story you know like it's wholly driven on like what is Katniss thinking what is Snow thinking what is Peeta thinking like it's driven on these characters thoughts and you can't get that in movies you, you know it's kind of like up to the actor and the director to kind of try to convey what a character is thinking but I think I would really love to read the books to kind of really just get that internal dialogue I don't know if it's in first person um but if it is I would love to get inside Katniss's head like fully and just you know do that but yeah I say five stars it was really entertaining I liked meeting Lucy Gray um yeah the action fire the cinematography I thought was really good um and I would definitely suggest watching the other films before just to be like oh wait like this is where it came from this is where this started from like that type of vibe um what else what else oh I also now understand the song the you can you can catch me now I understand it now I thought it had a completely different meaning when I was listening to it before seeing the actual film and now that I've seen the film I understand completely what it means and obviously I'm not gonna say it because like I'm not gonna spoil it but like Olivia Rodrigo was like yeah she like went in because it's like she 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 recorded the song like in post-production so she got to watch the film and then she recorded the song and now I understand why and it just makes it hit so differently so so differently so yeah I, I I say five stars I would really suggest you guys go watch it I really I really suggest I think it also is very how do I how do I say this it's very current for like the times that we're in right now like Suzanne Collins I saw an interview where did I tell you guys this already I don't think I did I saw an interview where Suzanne Collins said that she got the idea for Hunger Games when during the Vietnam War because her father was a soldier in the Vietnam War and she would be flipping back and forth well no she was like six at the time so like her mom was flipping back and forth like going through like different channels on the television and 
she would flip and then there would be like news and it would be like scenes from the war and it would be like this graphic imagery and then she would flip again and it would be like an, a reality TV show or like an episode of Survivor. And she was kind of going into that, she wanted the Hunger Games to kind of explore the types of feelings that we get as people when we do that, like the desensitization to these images that we see and like you could really see that correlation in the in the in the core of the hunger games itself like the hunger games itself is these capital people the, the these elitists these rich people forcing children of of the poor to go in and murder and slaughter each other for the sake of entertainment it's like kind of like that and there's this there's this one line um which isn't a spoiler it's in the trailer okay it's in the trailer but one character says your job is to turn these kids into spectacles not survivors and that a hits for the current times like you know what i'm saying but also based on what suzanne was saying in that interview it makes sense because she was saying like you know these people like make connections to the people on survivor if you don't know survivor i guess it's like i think it's like is that the one no there's naked and afraid that's the one where they're naked and they're afraid on like an abandoned island but i guess survivor is something similar to that where you have to go out and survive in the wild or something but you're able to build connections with these people and you're like like you know what i'm saying like you're you're you're, you're fighting for them like you want them to survive versus when you're flipping to these scenes for these graphic images of of war and and like atrocities and she was saying like it mattered to her because she knew her father was there but then she's picturing other people that didn't have fathers there didn't have family members there flipping back to survivor and being like oh no i resonate with this more because i can connect with the people in pain here but i can't connect with the people in pain in these news images and that's kind of the vibe of the hunger games it's like making you entertained by it because you can connect with katniss because you can connect with Peta, and then you send them gifts and all this so yeah i just i really love the world she built i i love her world building as you know as a dystopia and yeah i definitely really want to read the books but I already have so many books on my TBR, but it's gonna get there. Like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. Oh shoot, it's so late. Okay, yeah. So that's my synopsis. Really liked it. Oh, the last thing that I wanted to say, the last thing that I wanted to say, is that, <laughs> like, okay, this is satire, but at the same time, not completely, because I'm like, y'all. We keep casting these good looking fine men to play villains in the villain origin stories. And I was sitting in the theater like, Ugh. I was sitting in the theater like, Coriolanius Snow, like, what's that? What's that? Which I, he's a murderer. He's a tyrant. Why was I doing that? Why was I doing that? So I feel like they try to gaslight me. I feel like they try to gaslight me by casting that guy. But I guess it's like, in a sense, you can't cast and subjectively, or I don't know. I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Y'all could have walked into that movie and been like, no, my, he was ugly. He was cute to me. Especially with that buzz cut. I, they really, they really, when he, when he had that buzz cut, I was really rooting that this story was just gonna take a completely different turn and this was gonna be like oh yeah yeah no he's not gonna become snow this is actually his brother or something like that like I was really hoping because that buzz cut was too good it was too good so I don't know y'all might have not <laughs> thought that he looked you know pleasing to the eye but I did, and it was making me feel gaslit in that chair. It was definitely making me feel gaslit in that chair, okay? It really was. It really was. So, I think that's, that's, that's all I had to say about the Hunger Games. May the odds be ever in your favor. May they ever be in your favor. Did I do my edges okay? Like, 
That's why I can't do anything while I'm kind of distracted. I really gotta go though, cause it's already like midday and I'm in charge of the appetizers. So, what the heck? I gotta go. I also have to show you guys those books that I bought, so, but I'm gonna do that after I get ready. I don't know, I guess I will just do light makeup like I did yesterday. I don't wanna do anything crazy because my skin has been getting a little bit better. Where's the wood? Knock on wood. It's been getting a little bit better because I took out one of the products that I was using because I think that product just was not it for my skin. Um, and I resorted to just like straight up like niacinamide and like vitamin C and I think that's been working out pretty well. So I don't wanna do too much makeup and then I clog my pores and then it, you know, goes back to, to, to whatever. Um, head tie, head tie. I just, I hope that this inspires a resurgence of the dystopian trilogy era in both books and, and also in films because I just, I love dystopia. I think dystopia is probably, I don't know if it'll be my favorite genre, like, cause it has to be very specific. Like maybe like why a dystopia with hints of fantasy or hints of sci-fi, like it's gotta have something. It's gotta have a little bit of something in it um, to make it like my favorite genre. But I really do love dystopia. And I think it's because I just love understanding how things become the way that they are. And like, I love, like when I watch dystopia, like it feels like a, like a history class. And I kind of enjoy that vibe where it's like, you know, the world has ended. And like, I like seeing an author's take on why the world has ended and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So I really want a resurgence. Like, please, can we get some more dystopia books out there? I mean, I know there's a lot, but like there hasn't been ones that are like as popular as they were in like 2013, you know what I'm saying? Like when it was like, people were feral for Divergent, Maze Runner, Hunger Games. What was the other one? The Selection? Like all of those were like at the top. Okay y'all, makeup done. It looks more intense. Or maybe it does look intense in person. I promise I literally did like a few dabs of concealer. I think it's the highlight. I put on, I accidentally put on a little too much highlight. So I'm gonna have to wipe that off. But I'm thinking maybe this for my fit. It's not like the cutest actually. I mean with my Uggs, could be cute. Like this off the shoulder top from American Eagle these pants from American Eagle and then of course I'll just do my Uggs like I don't know it's not I don't know I don't know I don't know wait let me prop it up here because I can't I need to be able to think a possibility was that I could have done my denim skirt my long denim skirt but then I was like no I can barely breathe in that skirt and I'm about to stuff my face with an astronomical amount of food. So like that doesn't make sense. These jeans are nice and stretchy so like they can stretch with me. I just think they look like maybe once I accessorize, I don't know, like maybe the top just has to be different. Maybe something like this. What even is this? Oh, this is another off the shoulder. Let me try this. Mm, how do we what do we think this one could be like one side one shoulder but it's a little I don't know if I like the cut of it what do we mm, I don't think I don't know this one doesn't feel like a good vibe no I don't think I like this wait I need to put on like a necklace because this whole bare neck thing isn't helping anything. No. No. Not a vibe. Not a vibe at all. 
What else do I got here? These are all pants. These are all pants. I could do... No, that's like blue. That doesn't make any sense. All right. Let me continue work on this, and I'm going to get back to you. I've worn this exact fit so many times. But I feel like it's a good balance of like homey festive vibes, but then also like I'm comfortable because I'm literally just going to my grandma's house. Okay. And I don't want to do too much. So yeah. And I really just want to stick with these jeans because they're super stretchy. So I'll be able to eat as much as possible. I'm a little bit worried about the cream because I'm a, I'm a messy eater sometimes. I just see red and then it's just like everything's flying everywhere. That's a lie. Why am I? No. Like now I, now I sound like a three year old. Now I have, now I sound like I have no self control, but it'll be, it'll be whatever. I'll just have to eat more carefully, but yeah, I think I'll just do this. She's kind of basic, but it's whatever. Try to decide if I want to actually, oh no, it looks weird from the, I was like, oh, like a ponytail doesn't look too bad from the front, but then from the side, that should look crazy, <laughs> look crazy. So I'm gonna put it in a bun. But yeah, so we'll stick with this. Yeah, this is more comfy. I mean, I love this top. I haven't gotten the chance to wear this top, and I really do love it. I just think that this is more comfortable, what I'm wearing right now. So I want to stick with the whole comfort vibe. I need to pack my bag real quick because I decided I'm just going to sleep at my mom's house tonight. Just because... Yeah, so I'm going to pack my bag for that. And then, yeah, and then what else do I have to do? Nothing really. And then I just, I'm just going to get going to my mom's. And then, I don't know what time we're going to my grandma's. Pretty much packed up and ready to go. I'm starving. And I think I'm just going to have to wait until I get to my mom's to eat something. Even though the worst thing to do on Thanksgiving is to go in extremely hungry because then like when you eat everything at once, like there's like the gas bubbles in your stomach like make you get full up, filled faster. I don't know, something like that. You're supposed to like eat in, in small increments throughout the day, not like a huge meal by the end. But anyways, before I go, I wanted to show you guys the books that I got. I'm pretty sure I probably said it in the voiceover. Like now I don't know what you guys know from yesterday because of my stupid slow motion. But anyways, um, I went to the bookstore. I went to McAnally because I was like, I had some time in between eating and then the movie. So like, I was like, let me just go to a bookstore. But like, normally I just like to go to a bookstore and just look. And then I write down on, in my notion, like the things that I'm going to get next. Like, you know, I just like to see it in person, feel the vibe. I just like the vibe of the bookstore. And I was going to do that. But then I walked in. And I've never really been in a McNally. I, I normally only go to Barnes and Nobles. So I've never been in a McNally bookstore for real, for real. And this one was huge. It was beautiful. It was, it was so, like, it just looked, like, stunning. It was stunning. Very aesthetic. And I was browsing. And then, like, I walked up the steps. And, like, the steps led me directly into the historical section. The historical nonfiction section. And then I turned to the left. And all of a sudden, I'm in, I'm in the historical nonfiction Middle East section. So, with that being said, I got three books. Okay, I got three books. And I said this before, they were like, six, it was like 60 bucks. The tax was like $5. So I don't even freaking, I don't, I don't, I don't know what I just did. But you know what, I'm gonna give myself grace because they're educational and I've been wanting to read these books for a solid month now and I like keep putting it off because I'm like, oh, well, I have so much other stuff that I'm reading on my TBR and I still am currently in the middle of a, I literally just started um, Better Than The Movies, YA novel. But I don't know, something about it just being right there in front of my face made me like want to read them so bad so anyways i got three books on the middle east specifically on palestine these are very popular ones that a lot of people have suggested to like learn about the history and stuff like that so the first one i got which i've been really really wanting to read is the hundred years war on palestine a history of settler colonialism and resistance from 1917 to 2017 by rashid khalidi 
author of Palestinian Identity. So I got this one. A lot of people have like very great things to say about this one. Um, and this writer who's like, I think written a lot of other things. It's pretty dense and the text is pretty small. Okay, so this is gonna, you know, it's gonna take me a little while to finish this. Like it'll happen over time. And these like aren't books that like, you know, I've gotten to read them all. Like it doesn't have to be read all in one sitting. Like these are things that I can come back to, like that I can read over time, stuff like that. But it's like, yeah, it's like 300 something pages. And then the sources themselves are like 100 pages. But the text is pretty small, but I'm, I'm still just like really excited about this one, excited to go like in depth with the history. This one I started a little bit last night. This is called 10 Myths About Israel by Ilan pa pa Pape. Ilan Pape is Israel's bravest, most principled, most incisive historian, quoted by somebody. So this one is groundbreaking book published in the published on the 50th anniversary of the occupation that outspoken and radical Israeli historian Ilan Pampe, hopefully I'm saying there, I don't know if it's a woman or a man, examines the most contested ideas concerning the origins and identity of the contemporary state of Israel. So yeah, got this, started it last night just because I feel like this one, it has the biggest text, it's the shortest, so I'll probably get through this one the fastest. And already I'm like, very much into it i started like the um the preface and yeah i just really i really like if you guys didn't know like history was my favorite subject it still is like it's why like i'm in college and like i finished all my history prerequisites but like i'm still signing up for history classes because i just like knowing i like knowing things i like being knowledgeable about the world but I have a lot of vast knowledge about U.S. history. Like, if you ask me the breakdown of U.S. history from, like, 1492 and so on and so forth, like, I could give you kind of a good ballpark. Um, but world history and stuff outside of the West, I know nothing about. And I hate that. I've always hated that because it's, like, they don't really teach you it in, like, public school, like, U.S. public school, like, you don't really learn much about other countries and other continents if it's not included in like the Western European vibe or a little bit of Asia. Like we really get like a tiny bit of Asia, but only when it, we're involved in a war between them, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I know my knowledge on other parts of the world is very minimal and I would like to change that and a great way to do that is reading these books because it's not in our textbooks like like it's not in our textbooks so you just gotta like go somewhere else to get it like they had a whole african section and when i finish with these i really want to get into reading books from like african historians because like there's so much that i do not know about africa and it is an entire continent and i know literally point like two percent 0.02%, right? Is that a good percent? I don't know. I know literally nothing about Africa and I want to learn a lot more. So um, yeah, that's why I was really interested in getting these books. So I got this one. Last one I got is Except for Palestine, The Limits of Progressive Politics by Mark Lamont Hill. I like Mark Lamont Hill. He's kind of like, he was a, he, I don't know if he still is, but he was or is a professor at Temple University. Um, he also was a correspondent for CNN and then they dropped, they fired him. Okay, they fired him. Um, but he's like also kind of just outspoken. He's like, would I describe him as an activist? I guess I could describe him as an activist, but he's really cool. He's really knowledgeable on this subject. He's been studying it for many, many years. Um, and then the other person, Michelle Plitnik, I have no idea who that is. But I think this one I will, do you last or second? I don't know. I'll just see how I feel. But this one is more like modern and this one is more about United States connection to Palestine, but more so in like the activism sense. So yeah, those are the three that I got. And I'm really, ooh, 
and I'm really really excited for them I'm kind of been getting into like this non-fiction desire like desire to read more non-fiction I ordered um what is it is it Angela Davis what is it let me see let me see because it was supposed to it was supposed to arrive yesterday and then it didn't so it, they postponed it to tomorrow did I already tell you guys this yeah no I ordered Angela Davis's book freedom is a constant struggle Ferguson Palestine and the foundations of a movement because everybody says great things about that book um and like she says like a nice breakdown of like power dynamics and all this stuff and yeah I've just been wanting to like educate myself on a lot of different things so that's my book haul that's my book haul slightly different book haul I'm also like I said um I'm like one chapter through better than the movies I'm reading it on my kindle and I'm liking it so far it's very YA in like the writing sense like the writing is like very fast paced very like kind of like straight to the point which I, I like that like I, I like it because I feel like I've been reading a lot of adult books lately that kind of are very like literary um so the whole like straight to the point thing it like it makes me feel like I'm watching like a Netflix rom-com so it's like very light-hearted and fun so far so I'm enjoying that those are my book updates I feel like every vlog like I should just start giving a book update because it's hard for me like I feel like I at the moment I am in my life like I can't be a traditional booktuber because I like it takes me at least two weeks probably to finish one book just because of school and it'll be a lot better like when I'm on break and stuff like that but you know you know I watch these booktubers and they like they can finish three books in like a matter of a week and I'm just like I wish I could read that fast I can't read that fast and also it's just like yeah so the, the updates will just come when they come so just keep looking out for the updates they're still coming I gotta add Hunger Games to my list to my ever extensive TBR physical TBR growing list <laughs> let's get going let's get going cuz at this point like it's time to eat dinner like that's I don't know <laughs> 